In this problem, we're going to do an induction proof. So we have a function. It's defined from the set of positive integers into the set of positive integers by this recursive definition. So f of 1 is equal to 1, and f of m plus 1 is equal to f of n plus 2 to the n for all positive integers. This is called a recursive definition because um, the function values are defined in terms of previous function values. Um, you could think of it as a sequence. Remember, every sequence is actually a function whose domain is a set of positive integers. So this is really a recursive sequence. And we have to prove this statement. So this is what we have to prove. So this is our s sub n. So we have to show that f of n is equal to this based off of this definition. So let's go through it very, very carefully. So proof. So I like to break up my induction proofs into steps. So the first step is the base case or the base step. And this is when you show your statement is true uh, for n is equal to one. So we basically have to show that when we plug in one into our function, well, what, what do we need to get? Well, we need to get something that matches this formula. So if you plug in one here, you get two to the one, which is two. So you get two minus one, which is one. So note, By definition of the function, so f of 1 is equal to 1, which is equal to 2 to the 1 minus 1. So this agrees with this, right? So we have that f of 1 equals 1, and that agrees with this definition. So this means s sub 1 is true, right? Because we have f of 1, and that's equal to 2 to the 1 minus 1. So the statement is true when n equals 1. Okay, now we're going to do uh, the rest of the proof. So some people just jumble it into one step. I break it up into two. So this is going to be what's called the induction hypothesis. Or simply IH. And this is where you assume that your statement is true for some positive integer k. So I'm going to say suppose that we have s sub k being true. What does that mean? Well, that means if we plug in k, we get 2 to the k minus 1. We have that. This is the formula for the function for some positive integer k. So for some positive integer k. Again, we're trying to prove, just to really emphasize this, we're trying to prove that this formula is valid for this function, right? The function is given by this definition. That's why the base case was a little bit different, right? We we plugged in one here, we got one using this definition, and we showed that it matches the formula. So the formula is satisfied when n is equal to one. Now we're assuming the formula is satisfied for some positive integer k, and that leads us to the last step, which is the induction step, where we have to show the formula is satisfied for k plus one. So this is the induction step. And it's very, very helpful to write down what you're trying to prove. And so when you do that in an induction proof, you need to tell the reader that you're doing that. So I'm going to put it in parentheses and say we need to show, so NTS, this is not part of the proof. Okay, this is just what we're trying to do, so this is just for our own personal benefit. So we, NTS, need to show that this formula is true for k plus 1. So in other words, that if we have f of k plus 1, that that is equal to 2 to the k plus 1 minus 1. That's what we have to show uh, in this problem. Okay, so let's do it. So then, and let's be fun, let's switch colors here just to have a little bit of fun. So f of k plus 1. So we can use the induction hypothesis. In fact, we have to use it. That is extremely important. But we can't use it yet. So what, where do we look? Well, at our recursive definition right here. f of n plus 1 is f of n plus 2 to the n. So we can use that. Because this is true for all n, right? So and cer it's certainly true for this k. So this is f of k plus 2 to the k. And this is by definition of the function, right? By definition of our recursive definition. Uh, the recursive definition of our function, rather. This next step is key, because now we're going to use the induction hypothesis. We're going to replace f of k with 2 to the k minus 1 plus 2 to the k. And I'm going to indicate that by putting it in quotes over here. So this is by... IH, which is our induction hypothesis. And we have to show that this is true, right? So we're almost there. Here we have 2 to the k, here we have 2 to the k, that means we have 2, 2 to the k, and then minus 1. If that step's confusing, think of it as x. We have x minus 1 
plus x. x plus x is 2x minus 1. 2 to the k plus 2 to the k is 2 times 2 to the k minus 1. A lot of people have a really hard time uh, with that problem. It's, it's totally normal. How do we deal with this? Well, there's a 1 here. And then properties of exponents say that when the bases are the same and we multiply, we add the exponents. This is 2 to the k plus 1 minus 1. So we have that f of k plus 1 is equal to 2 to the k plus 1 minus 1. This is exactly what it means for s sub k plus 1 to be true. So here we assumed s sub k was true. Here we showed it's true uh, when, when n is k plus 1. So we finished all three parts of the uh, induction proof. So at the end we just say, thus, by the principle of mathematical, whoops, principle of mathematical induction, we have f of n equals, and it was 2 to the n uh, minus 1 for all positive integers. And that completes... Uh, our induction proof. It's not a hard proof, but um, it does require a little bit of finesse because you really have to think about what you're trying to show. It's a little bit different than the other induction proofs. You're trying to show that this formula is true, okay? You're trying to prove this formula for the function, which is a little different. So you're given a recursive definition and you're trying to prove a formula is true. I hope this video has been helpful to anyone out there in the world who's trying to learn uh, some induction proofs. Good luck and take care.